I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me will never die. Food for Soul and Goa Co-working present today's readings and reflection. June 2, 2021. Wednesday of the ninth week in Ordinary Time. A reading from the book of Tobit. Grief-stricken in spirit, I, Tobit, groaned and wept aloud. Then with sobs, I began to pray. You are righteous, O Lord, and all your deeds are just. All your ways are mercy and truth. You are the judge of the world. And now, O Lord, may you be mindful of me and look with favor upon me. Punish me not for my sins, nor for my inadvertent offenses, nor for those of my ancestors. We sinned against you and disobeyed your commandments. So you handed us over to plundering, exile, and death, till you made us the talk and research of all the nations among whom you had dispersed us. Yes, your judgments are many and true in dealing with me as my sins and those of my ancestors deserve. For we have not kept your commandments, nor have we the paths of truth before you. So now, deal with me as you please, and command my life breath to be taken from me, that I may go from the face of the earth into dust. It is better for me to die than to live, because I have heard insulting calumnies, and I am overwhelmed with grief. Lord, command me to be delivered from such anguish. Let me go to the everlasting abode. Lord, refuse me not, for it is better for me to die than to endure so much misery in life and to hear these insults. On the same day, at Ekbatana in Medea, it so happened that Ragul's daughter Sarah also had to listen to abuse for father's maids. For she had been married to seven husbands. Wicked demon Asmodeus killed them off before they could have intercourse with her, as it is prescribed for wives. So the maid said to her, You are the one who strangles your husbands. Look at you. You have already been married seven times, but you have had no joy with any one of your husbands. Why do you beat us? Is it the count of your seven husbands because they are dead? May we never see a son or daughter of yours. The girl was deeply saddened that day, and she went into an upper chamber of her house where she planned to hang herself. But she reconsidered, saying to herself, No, people would level this insult against my father. You had only one beloved daughter, but she hanged herself because of ill fortune. And thus would I cause my father in his old age to go down to the netherworld laden with sorrow. It is far better for me not to hang myself, but to beg the Lord to have me die, so that I need no longer live to hear such insults. At that time then, she spread out her hands and facing the window, poured out her prayer. Blessed are you, O Lord, merciful God, and blessed is your holy and honorable name. Blessed are you in all your works forever. At that very time, the prayer of these two suppliants was heard in the glorious presence of Almighty God. So Raphael was sent to heal them both to remove the cataracts from Tobit's eyes so that he might again see God's sunlight and to marry Raguel's daughter Sarah, Tobit's son, Tobiah, and then drive the wicked demon Asmodeus from her. 
The Word of the Lord. The Responsorial Psalm The response is, To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. In you I trust. Let not be put to shame. Let not my enemies exult over me. No one who waits for you shall be put to shame. Those shall be put to shame who heedlessly break faith. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. Your ways, O Lord, make known to me. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are God my Savior. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. Remember that you are compassion, O Lord, and your kindness are from of old. In your kindness remember me, because of your goodness, O Lord. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. Good and upright is the Lord. Thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice. He teaches the humble his way. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. Alleluia, Alleluia. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me will never die. Alleluia, Alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Some Sadducees, who say there is no resurrection, came to Jesus and put this question to him, saying, Teacher, Moses wrote for us, If someone's brother dies, leaving a wife but no child, his brother must take the wife and raise up descendants for his brother. Now, there were seven brothers. The first married a woman and died, leaving no descendants. So the second brother married her and died, leaving no descendants, and the third likewise, and the seven left no descendants. Last of all, the woman died. At the resurrection, when they arise, whose wife will she be? For all seven had been married to her. Jesus said to them, Are you not misled because you do not know the scriptures or the power of God? When they rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but they are like the angels in heaven. As for the dead being raised, have you not read in the book of Moses, in the passage about the bush, how God told him, I am the God of Abraham, and of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is not God of the dead, but of the living. You are greatly misled. The Gospel of the Lord. Reflection on today's readings. Our readings speak of life and afterlife. We are reminded that life on earth is not always easy and the life we have after this life is much different than we expect. In our first reading, Tobit and his future daughter-in-law, Sarah, both raise a prayer to God seeking an end to the misery of their lives. God sends a messenger of hope and good news to them. The psalm is a prayer of one who experiences difficulties in life and asks that God hears the prayer and brings the gift of compassion. In the Gospel, Jesus responds to the question of the Sadducees concerning life after death. In the passage read yesterday, it was related how Tobit develops cataracts and cannot see. He experiences other trials. As a result of all the hardships he is enduring, He prays that God will allow him to die. Like some of the holy ones and prophets before, the request to leave this life of misery is lifted up. At the same time, a Israelite, Sarah, prays a similar prayer. She has been married seven times, and each time before she is able to consummate the marriage, her husband dies. She thinks about ending her own life by hanging herself. Yet, She realizes that suicide will only make it harder on her father Ragel, meaning friend of God. Thus she prays that God will take her life. God responds to both people as they lift up their prayers to God. God sends Raphael, a name which literally means God's healing, to them. The psalmist is also experiencing the trying events of living here on earth. In prayer, the psalmist prays that God will be faithful to the promises made. 
those of bring compassion to all who call upon the Lord. It is in remembering what God has spoken that one receives relief and strength to continue one's journey through the veil of tears. In the Gospel, Jesus is questioned by the Sadducees, who do not believe in love and death. They present a hypothetical question dealing with the Leveret Law which is based on the passage in the Torah, Pentateuch, stating that a woman whose husband dies before giving birth to an heir, must marry her deceased husband's brother in order to give the dead brother an heir, Deuteronomy 25, 6. The Sadducees want to know in heaven whose wife she will be if she marries seven brothers, similar to the situation of Sarah in today's first reading. The whole purpose of Sadducees' question is to show how the concept of afterlife is ridiculous in their eyes. Jesus not only refutes their question, but refocuses the attention upon the more important issue, who God is. Using an older scripture passage, one found in the book of Exodus, 3, 6, Jesus says that in the afterlife relationships will be different. The one and only relationship that counts then, and even now, is the relationship with the living God, the God who was, who is, and who is to come. Obviously there is a lot in the readings today. It would be easy to talk about suicide and the depression which leads one to committing, or at least contemplating committing, suicide. I could also reflect on the Leveret Law and marriage of people. Yet, taking the cue from the Gospel, we need to focus, as Jesus directs, on the relationship one has with the living God. God is truly the God of the living. God is the giver of earthly life. God is also the one who takes away life, or, better put, decides when an individual is transition from this life to the next life. And God is the one who gives life in the next world. God is also the source of strength during the journey of life right now towards the life that will be. What has seen me through the hard and trying times during my earthly journey is focusing on the God of the living. If I had not been able to focus on my relationship with the Lord and all the promises God has made, I would have ended my life. There were times when I prayed to God, as did Tobit and Sarah, and asked the Lord Jesus to take me away from my miseries. I had even contemplated suicide, as had other members of my family had actually attempted. Yet, when I looked at who God is, I realized that I must bless and praise God. God has a plan for my life. God is to be praised in my living my life, even in the midst of the trials and tribulations. God, the living God, will transition me from this life to the next life when the Lord Jesus determines, not when I do. God wants me and everyone else to have life, and life to the full, John 10, 10. We must be able to lift our eyes and focus on the living God and praise the Lord Jesus for what God is doing in providing life for us now and in the future. The only fitting response we can give to God as we journey through our heavily burdened life is that of Sarah in today's first reading, Blessed are you, O Lord, merciful God, and blessed is your holy and honorable name. Blessed are you in all your works forever. The personal question for today. How have I dealt with those trying times in my life when I seem to be at my wit's end? What kept me going when I had almost given up? How do I see the acts of the living God in my life? What can I do to help others as they struggle through the stresses of life on earth? How can I lift up a prayer of praise to God in order to know that I trust the God who was, who is, and who is to come? Let us pray. Blessed are you, O Lord, merciful God, and blessed is your holy and honorable name. Through your goodness you have given us life on this earth. You are always with us as we live this life. For the times we have not looked to you but burdened by the problems and trials of life, we seek your mercy and forgiveness. We thank you especially for sending your Son, Jesus, to share our human existence, to face our problems to be challenged by life's trying times, and to show us how to trust in you. From our Master Teacher, may we learn news that the God of the living, who cares for us now and in the future. As always we lift up this prayer of praise, blessing you in all your works forever. We make this prayer in Jesus' name, for he is your Son and our Brother, he is the way, 
the truth, and the life, and he has gone through life, suffering, to be living and reigning with you and the Holy Spirit, our one and only living God, forever and ever. Amen. Compiled by Father Frankie Fernandez OFM Capuchin Justice Peace Integrity Creation JPIC Capuchin Goa